Contemporary India is about modernity. It's about technology. It's so much about consumerist gadgets and goodies. Electronic and psychedelic images crowd our imagination. It's difficult to imagine when you look at a coastline like this today that just a few hundred years ago, India was perhaps most known for some granules. Small, colored, textured spices. India was once celebrated as the land of spices. Even during the Roman and Greek empires, Indian spices were very popular. Perhaps even before that. Slowly, compulsively, spices sucked in Kerala's calm, placid fishing hamlets into the vortex of world trade, where India soon became predominant. Kerala was once known for its fishermen, backwaters, coastlines and forests where spices like black pepper grew wildly. It was an innocent world of spices, soft and succulent, fragrant and free. Spices have been used since ages in different cultures for different purposes. That's why spice dealers have always had business to do. Archaeology and legend trace spice history to the earliest civilizations. The Arabs dominated the spice trade during the 7th to the 15th centuries. They supplied Europe with spices but kept their source of spices India and the Indonesian islands, a guarded secret. Europeans knew that they had to find a direct route to reach the source of spices, India and Indonesia. There were around 997 sea voyages in search of black pepper alone in the last millennium. Vasco da Gama landed with his Portuguese crew soon after dawn on the 21st of May 1498 at Calicut. The Portuguese knew that they couldn't beat the extremely adept Arab traders at business, so they used their maritime power to beat them at sea. Spices were traded from India through the centuries, right from the time of the Romans. So uh, the Portuguese did nothing new except that they came by sea and took back vast quantities of spices, which changed European history because what was a luxury item now became a common man's uh, food. And so the trade increased many times over. The Arabs already entrenched in Malabar's spice trade, resented the Portuguese traders. It's only after much difficulty that Vasco da Gama managed to persuade the Raja of Calicut to grant the Portuguese a limited permission to trade. This is the house in Fort Kochi, where Vasco da Gama is believed to have lived half a millennium back. It's near Matancheri, where the ancient spice market was located. The most valuable spice in medieval Europe was black pepper. It was celebrated as black gold. Unbelievable though it may sound, in those times, ransoms were often paid in black pepper. Lisbon was the new entrepot of the European spice trade. 
the power had clearly shifted from Venice to Lisbon. Europeans seem to have loved spices between the 11th and the 16th centuries. That aristocrats serve platters overflowing with spices, much like we serve dessert today. This is the fiery red vindalo, which of course is made of all these spices, cloves, peppercorn, cumin seeds, cinnamon, main ingredient in it, chilies, so that's bedgi chilies, then um, garlic, ginger, and vinegar. In Goa, we use bedgi chilies and not Kashmiri chilies because Kashmiri chilies give red color but less spice whereas vindalo is supposed to be spicy there is evidence of the rise and fall of the arabs the portuguese the dutch and the british as they jostled for control over malabar's lucrative spice trade the architecture of Fort Kochi, where Vasco da Gama lived for a while, stands testimony to Kerala's tryst with history. The influence of the Portuguese spice traders was being felt throughout the Malabar coast. This is a place where you have intermingling of various cultures. Whether they are East Indians staying here, you have Brahmins staying here, you might be having around outside Kotachiwari, Chandrasenya Kayasta Prabhu, or you have the Pathare Prabhus. And if you observe, all of them are using the same spices. In this urban village of Mumbai called Kotachiwari, the flavor of Portuguese culture can be felt to this day. Most of the community here shared certain traditions and the traditions are very closely wound around the spices that were powdered and put into a bottle. Now this is something unique to the East Indian community that I belong to. Here, East Indians, an indigenous Mumbai community of Catholics, live together with Hindu Maharashtrians. Kotajiwari is a reprint of history. Each spice carries a distinct flavor. Each spice is burdened or bequeathed with a special history. Badli Wangi stuff brinjols has a particular masala called Kala Goda Masala. Now, Kala means black, Goda means sweet masala. Now, the word sweet doesn't mean that it is very sweet, but it is not spicy. In Kala Goda Masala, they use more black spices, and that's why it is black masala, like cloves, cinnamon, peppercorn, uh, black cardamom, then uh, the other spices that go is cumin seeds and coriander seeds and fenugreek seeds and bay leaves and, and all these together, which also includes dry coconut, makes Kala Goda Masala. Let's garnish it with some coriander leaves. Jewtown tells many a story. It's here that a large community of Jewish traders once arrived in the 15th century seeking protection from the king of Cochin, who granted them this land near his own palace at Martin Cherry. Over the years, it came to be known as Jewtown. We used to see, put this black pepper in our mouth. For example, I will show you. If it gives a good sound, it means it is well dried. If it doesn't give sound, it is 
how much uh, time it takes to bake it, we are able to make out how much moisture is there. That is 8% or 10% or 12% or 5%. This is what Jewtown once might have looked like. But this is today. This is Kari Bauli, Asia's biggest spice market, as you find it now on any trading day. Deals being made and unmade, tough negotiations, the scintillating smell of spices, the strong, pungent aroma in the air ready to suffocate. Red chilies provoking endless cuffs and tears, even as trading goes on. Before spices were embroiled in conflict, before they travelled forth on tempestuous seas, before they were confiscated by commerce, once spices grew freely and wildly in the forests of the Malabar coast. Spices lost their innocence as foreign traders began to exploit them commercially. The colours of commerce didn't allow spices the luxury of growing in the wild. Even today, labour is often difficult to find in Periyar, a border district of Kerala. Nowadays, Periyar plantations in the border districts of Kerala use Tamilian labour. The Marathas learned the use of red chilies while battling the Portuguese in Goa. The Portuguese had brought red chilies from Mexico. Indians quickly took to red chilies since they were easier to grow compared to black pepper and cheaper too. In turn, the Mughals learned to use red chilies from the Marathas in battle. The korma liberally uses dollops of fried onions, grinded for flavour, and garam masala, a hybrid mixture of many spices. The real secret lies in the ratio of the spices used. The garam masala adds its aroma and taste to create a traditional Mughlai dish that still lives on in the bylanes of Turkman Gate, which was once the backyard of the Mughal Empire. हम तो इतने जानते हैं जब हमारे अब्बा थे उन्होंने ये जो मलका अल जवत बैठी थी अपने ताजपोशी के लिए तो इन्होंने हमारे अब्बा को बुलाया था और ताजपोशी जब हुई थी तो हमारे अब्बा ने उनका खाना पकाया था और सवा सवा किलो के लड्डू ये चलके उन्होंने बांटे Within India, invasions and wars were transmitting spices. Kebabs, so much of a part of popular Indian cuisine, originally came from the northwest frontier province. Their taste and flavour is carefully created with aromatic Indian spices. Bara kebab is the cuts of lamb. This kebab is made from the cuts of lamb 
every piece should be rubbed so that all this marination get nicely coated red chili powder uh, black cumin or royal cumin then garam masala garam masala is a mix of spices kachri powder kachri is uh, from the melon family when we aryans came from the central asia and that may be 5000 year or 6000 year back and the food traveled and while traveling on the way you know it picked up the different uh, kind of meats and different kind of spices or the herbs the lot of experimentation kept happening and the food a particular kind of food evolved one method of cooking which is used is the food cooked in chawal charcoal in tandoor Indian rituals have used spices from Vedic times. Om Jyoti Radhe Agnaye Swaha Yagnas require ritual offerings of spices like cloves, cardamom and cinnamon. Havan mein jo hum samagri ye dal rahe hain is samagri ke andar in in cheezon ko milaya gaya hai. Choti ilaichi aur ye guggal hai. Isi tarah se dalchini ye safed chandan ये गोला है ये चावल और ये जो है वो किशमिश है इट इज अंटिन्यूम विद इन विच फूड अपेयर इन दैदिक ट्रेडिशन चल चल तारी सबाई इसे पड़े एक चल देखी खूब सुंदर देखा स्पाइसिस टच द सेंसेस लाइक टर्मरिक As Haldi is pasted on a bride's body, her appearance changes. The mood sets in. The pungent yellow is an alluring contrast to the vermilion red, making the bride sparkle, glow, and celebrate. At dawn in this Bengal village fishermen are striving for their daily catch If it's hard work in chilly waters now there's a ray of sun to reward the effort soon As the husband fishes the wife prepares This is going to be a special day. Wah, ei nao tomar mach. Ela jompish kore rado dekhi. Amar to moshla batai hoye gelo. Ba ba ba, ei ektu kore nao ar ki korbe? If black pepper and cardamom tickle Kerala's palate, here in Bengal, mustard is special. In fact, all Bengali food is traditionally cooked in mustard oil. Its special aroma gives Bengali cuisine its special character. A famous dish in traditional Bengali cuisine is the shorshe bata mach or mustard flavored fish. 
where the spice adds a special pungency to tickle the taste buds. If mustard is being used to prepare a fish delicacy during the day, as the sun is about to set, the woman uses the self-same shorsho or mustard for a completely different purpose. In parts of eastern India, there's a belief that the evil eye or nazar can be cast away through this ritual called shorshopoda, using mustard and red chilies. Spices are widely used in Ayurveda, the traditional Indian system of medicine, now so popular in the West. In fact, Ayurved is part of a holistic body of ancient Indian knowledge that shares common roots and a common philosophy. Spices played a multiple role in circulating this knowledge in ancient India. In this food, spices play a major role because right spices will help you stimulate your digestive enzymes. If even if there are toxins in the food, if the right spices are used, the toxins are completely burned away. Traditional Indian food was based on the Ayurvedic prescription of spices. Ayurveda believed that spices with their medicinal qualities could infuse health into the diet. And such thoughts, in fact, govern the use of spices in Indian cuisine to this day. It's amazing how an essentially social system of medicine was integrally linked to the culinary culture of ancient India. The traditional thali is an iconic Indian dish. Today, spices have successfully reinvented themselves for a contemporary world. India is a dominating power in the supply of spice oils and rolling resin. I would say part of it is because the research institutes in India gave a big support and a modified method wherein you first separate the aroma and then make extraction to make the resin and then blend these two gives a superior product than what Westerners were getting by a single extraction. Modern science is being able to extract the most valuable properties of spices, aroma 
and color to create spice oils and oleoresins. As the light plays truant, testing and trying the texture of history, as the contours of society change, the colors of spices, their essential aroma remains universal. Centuries may pass by, yet the world of spices keeps reinventing itself, infusing cultures and fueling economies. The world of spices is etched in eternity, its elemental quality making it special and in some ways integrally connected to human civilization.